The Tories can never again claim to be the party of low tax. Now, that was the damning indictment of Keir Starmer today on Boris Johnson's social care plans. While Mr Starmer is certainly prone to hyperbole and Labour under Jeremy Corbyn would have hiked income tax to over 50% for the highest earners, it is undeniable that taxation is now at the highest ever share of national income. Families face a bigger tax burden under Boris Johnson than since the 1960s. The fact that a Conservative government believes the only solution to the country's biggest problems is increased taxes is just deeply depressing to me. The spectre of the nanny state looms over us more than ever before. And remember, folk like me were saying last March and April and May, when the National Health Service became the National COVID Service, that the consequences were going to be catastrophic and long-lasting. And now, that exact scenario has come to pass. Today, and I hate to say this, Starmer's prospects of becoming Prime Minister have dramatically increased. I think that's a very bad thing for the country, potentially. And that's why this was an unnecessary own goal by the Tories. If Boris Johnson intended to be a tax and spend anti-austerity prime minister, as he now obviously is, he should have been honest with us before the election. Instead, this was the key plank of his manifesto. I guarantee we will not raise the rate of income tax, VAT or national insurance. And in his first speech as Prime Minister, Boris had previously claimed this. I am announcing now on the steps of Downing Street that we will fix the crisis in social care once and for all with a clear plan we have prepared. But with or without COVID, it's now pretty obvious, let's be honest, there was no plan. This desperation move has meant a cast-iron manifesto promise to hike taxes is broken. So quite rightly this afternoon, Boris was awkwardly pressed by the political editor of his old newspaper, The Daily Telegraph, about whether he was a proponent of lower taxation any longer. Prime Minister, one quick question, just to drill down on that again. Uh, at heart, are you really still a low-tax Tory when you think of your own personal ideology? And I will give you a third chance to rule out this parliament any further tax rises if you want. I uh, certainly don't want any more tax rises this parliament. If, if you want, if you want uh, me to give that uh, emotional uh, commitment, uh, of course that's the case. But, it, but there's, a, there's, a, there's a formality in these things, which is that uh, fiscal matters are reserved. You know, these, these are decisions that, uh, that, that the Chancellor must make in the course of uh, his, his, his budgets, and, and, and that's quite proper. And to Tory voters, can you assure them you are still a low-tax Tory? Because that's what you ran on in 2019. And, I, and, and, and you know, I, I cut the, my share of, when I was Mayor of London, I cut my uh, share of the council tax by 20%. And, uh, and I want to, I, I believe in, in living more money uh, where possible to, for people to spend on uh, their families and their own, uh, their own priorities. Of course, that's right. Awkward, to say the least. But here's the issue. Boris Johnson privately believes it could take six years to clear the current NHS backlog. It's simply not viable to pump over £5 billion a year into the NHS every single year. So there needs to be efficiencies. There needs to be a serious and difficult national conversation and national debate about what's next. But today, politically, Boris has made a bold calculation that combining the social care national insurance tax hike with a plan to rescue the overwhelmed post-pandemic NHS will not term terminally damage him with voters. Now, I'm not so certain about that. And I say this as someone who always wanted Boris Johnson to succeed as prime minister. But it was four years after the initially popular US President George Bush pledged, read my lips, no new taxes, that voters booted him out of office, largely because he too broke that promise many years later. As leader of the House, Jacob Rees-Mogg warned Boris in his Sunday Express column at the weekend, voters remembered those words after President Bush had forgotten them. A social care solution was required, yes. The NHS must not be overwhelmed. But breaking a fundamental promise not to raise taxes was not the way to deal with it. So today, my faith in this government, uh, my faith in 
the compliant cabinet and my faith in Boris Johnson's prime ministership has been shaken. So the paranoid and COVID-centric scientists of SAGE are already prepping plans for a so-called firebreaker lockdown in October. What the hell is that? Well, apparently it could see restrictions introduced again, schools closed for twice the usual time during the holidays, mask mandates and God knows what else. The government insists these plans are only being prepared as a last resort to prevent unsustainable pressure on our NHS. But I fully expect us to be plunged into some sort of lockdown again this winter. To be clear, I certainly won't be following any sort of firebreaker limitations of my freedoms on October, actually, at any point again, because the time has come for us all to stand up for our right to return to our short and precious lives before we lose another two years of them. And at this exact moment, enter Neil Ferguson, Professor Lockdown, with more unnecessary and ill-advised scaremongering. This time he's saying disruptive measures will be needed at schools if COVID cases reach 100,000 a day, which let's not forget he predicted would happen in July. So Ferguson is back and he's told an Institute for Government event this. The measures which have been in place up until this point to reduce COVID transmission in schools have largely been removed in England. So definitely the risk of transmission is going to go up. <clears throat> we need to monitor what's happening in the next few weeks. If we start seeing something close to the worst case scenarios, case numbers at 100,000 or more, there may well need to be some course correction at that point. Can I just ask, who invites Neil Ferguson to, to these things? The bloke's just freestyling, as usual. He, he don't have any idea. And he should be ignored by the government and not given a constant platform on the BBC. In other news today, but a serious crisis uh, on the channel and, and Pretty Patel, in, in my view, needs to immediately stop paying France the £54 million we shelled out to the country to double their patrols on the channel. It's been an epic failure, with a record number of illegal immigrants arriving yesterday as the crisis grows. The Home Secretary was wrong, maybe even a little naive, to ever trust the French government. Uh, let's just remember, the French government don't actually want to stop the boats coming to the UK.